Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about React Server Components, a thing I didn't know existed until the end of last year. It was a pretty mean trick the uh, React Core team pulled by announcing React Server Components at the far end of the year. Their blog post is December 21st, and I think that was intentional so that people like me couldn't immediately release a video and disturb their much sought after vacation. Well, it worked because it's taken me a little while to actually make a video about it. Today, I'm gonna to be actually talking about three questions I had when, talk, when thinking about React Server Components. The first is, should you care? The second one is, what is it? Which is probably a great question to ask. And three is, how does it work? For the uh, curious minded people such as myself, and I imagine you as well. Let's start with question the first, should you care? Uh, let me ask you a question in retort. Uh, do you use React on the server? Was your answer no? Well then, turn off this video because then you have no reason to care about React server components. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again next week. Thanks, 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 thanks. You still here? Um, guess you're still curious about React server components or at the very least you actually want, have a need for React server components. Well, so there's three things you should know about it before we get into what it is. One, uh, it only affects React on the server. It is kind of a better way or actually a, a, a more, yeah, a better way of doing uh, server side generation. If that's the, that's the current way that you do re React on the server, you just render out to a string. It's a better way and a more uh, blessed by the React team way of doing so. Uh, two, the initial adoption of React server components will be in frameworks like Next.js or Gatsby. So if you use those frameworks, then you're in luck because you'll be able to benefit from it when it becomes final, which is my final point, which is that uh, React server components are not final. Huh, the final utterance of the word final. Um, this is a research and development situation with React Server Components right now. They're announcing it as a preview to get feedback from the community to make sure that they are on the right path, which means that it is not final. It is not going to be used in production by people outside of the React Core team, uh, which really means that you still don't have to worry about React server components until it's done. Unless you like living on that bleeding edge, which is just so messy. But if you do, and I do, which is bad, but that's also probably why you're here, then let's get to question the second, which is, what is React server components? So in their blog post, they actually have a link to a demo that lets you play with React server components on your computer. Uh, let me minimize this. And this is the link to the demo right here. Uh, it has a super long readme kind of detailing how to get it working locally, giving you some context around what it is. Uh, long story long, I have it working locally with all of the code checked out here. Now, the thing that you might already be noticing is that there's these new React components that have this dot server suffix and dot client. So let me talk about that for a second. So. React Server Components has now made a new type of React Component, a React Server Component. So there's this, this app.server is a React Server Component, and these uh, client components, these React Client Components are actually the components that everybody currently uses with React, because React is primarily a uh, UI client framework that's why it's there, but because they're now adding some support for the server, they needed a way to differentiate between the two. And they went with the file extension for, uh, after do thought, if you read their, if you watch their video, if you read their RFC, they actually go into great detail about why they went with this um, solution, which at first glance, for me at least, I was like, this is naive and simple and stupid. And then I read their explanation why they went with it, and I was like, no, I get you. You know, that's what always happens with, you know, here's the simple answer and you got to kind of explore all the possibilities before you say, oh, well, that was actually the best choice right there. Now, what's cool about React Server Components is that 
it lets you it lets react render components on the server put it to the client and then also have state stay the same uh make smaller bundles but concretely here's the initial render on the page you have this react notes which is what you see up here react notes it's rendering this search field which i saw showed you up here is being imported as a client file and this client file has you know all the things you usually use with a uh, react client component or as you before this blog post was just a react component and you can see it's right here this search component right here where you can search and things work fine and that's kind of the big that's what it is right that's kind of what it is at the service level where you can now write components that live only on the server and components that live on the client. Another detail though, is that the server can render client components, but not the other way around. Um, also what's interesting is that server components don't have access to uh, stateful or effectful hooks because when you're rendering things on the server, that means that makes no sense. There is no state on the server. There's no effects on the server. You're just rendering data, uh, which means that if you try to use uh, use state or use effect on a server component, React will yell at you. But in a client component, that's fine. You might also notice that there are um, some files with no extensions. And I think they're just calling these React components or React shared components because they can work both on the client and the server. Um, I kind of think of them as just templates, just easy ways to make UI in the React ecosystem. So let's talk about some of the things that this architecture, and this is, this is kind of it. This is at the high level what React Server Components are, but let's get into a little bit more details about what this situation enables. So in their RFC, they outline the motivations for this solution and what benefits it gets you. The first is zero size, zero bundle size components. And my summary of this is that when you actually render app.server and all these other server components, this note.list, so this note list is also a thing that I forgot to mention, uh, which is actually an item on their list here, is full access to the back end, is that server components, because they live on the server, have access to all server APIs. Essentially, it's living in nodes, you actually can access the database directly, which that's pretty cool. You can make direct DB queries in server components. This server component renders out this, whoop, let me bring it up over here. It renders out this list of notes over here. You can see select from notes where title is this, and it's rendering out this map of lists right here. But what's very cool is that these are server components. They have access to the back end, but this, the, the rendered result of this component is not included in the client side bundle. I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit because I wanna delve into that more, but when you actually inspect, so you actually open up here, you'll get the bundles here. You'll never see a bundle for notelist.server or app.server. It lives entirely on the server and just the results of it is what's get pushed down to the browser. So in that case, they mean zero bundle size components. The example they give here is if you're using some large library um, like moment.js, you can freely use that on your server and pay no penalty for having that be bundled onto the client because you're using it only on the server, which might be fine and just push it to the client. So that's one. Uh, the other one is full access to the backend, which I touched on back backwards way. Automatic code splitting. This is kind of a byproduct where, um, with server components, React can automatically do code splitting for you. It can lazily load additional components as it sees them used in different places on the server. So the example they have here is depending upon, so this is a server component. If you're using the new photo renderer, it'll lazily load this. Um, and then if you're not using the new photo renderer, you're gonna lazily load all that lazy load that no need for actually wrapping it in react.lazy uh, because the server knows what's being sent down what you're being asked for later it can just do that uh, the next thing that's awesome is uh, no client server waterfalls which when I was reading the RC and people's comments there's confusion around this but the gist is that if you have some page that has to make five API calls to like 
fully enrich the data on this page. The client's going one, two, three, four, five, and that's painful, that latency going from the browser to the server. However, if you're on the server and you have to make those, call, those same calls, it's a lot less expensive and a lot more efficient because you're going server to server. And you're going one, two, three, four, five, much faster to then push down the results to the client. So there's still the potential for a waterfall where you have to make one request, wait for the result, make a second request, wait for the result. Because it's on the server, it's just much more efficient. And that's what server components lets you do. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, the abstraction tax essentially says that you can still use React to write your UI, which is great. And that's kind of the gist of it. But I think now when I get to the third question, it'll kind of un bottle in your mind what I actually mean. Cause I think this is, it's hard to explain new things cause you need the questions with the answers and the answers depend upon the questions. So I've kind of gave you the answers and now let me show you, give you the questions. Let me show you the answers a little bit more. So the third question is how does React server components work? And the big fundamental uh, aha moment for me when I was trying to learn what React server components were, why I should care, is thinking about it in contrast to static site generation. So currently, when you have React on the server and you render your React application there, what is given to the browser is HTML. You are calling a React method render to string and React will take your entire component tree and then just render it into a string that'll be inserted into the DOM. And then React will hydrate and kind of start taking over on the client from there. So it's a pretty simple model where here's the basic layout template. And then I'm gonna start doing the client side magic from there. That is the fundamental difference with React server components is that they are not rendering to string. Instead, they are rendering to this almost IR, uh, immediate, intermediate representation of what the client side application is. So if I look in here, if I, if, I, if I look in the initial load, it looks just like any other client application where there is no DOM, you're just loading a script tag. You have this main JS, which is doing some, I'm sure it has React in here. But the first request that it's making here, this is the real magic is that you, the client, can make requests for different parts of the React server application. So in this case, it's saying the there is no selected ID, I'm not editing, and the search text is empty. And the response that the React server components is giving is this thing. This essentially uh, lines of commands that are being pushed down to the client. And this is the big difference. So here, you can see that it's rendering. Uh, this is, I think, actually the list. Let me see if I can find this. If I look for here, uh, wrote, here we go. So this line right here is going back to this note list right here, this notes list component. This is the notes list component being rendered on the server being pushed down to the client and rendered in this almost like it's, it's commands to react that knows how to apply these changes on the server to the client application such that it can render some things on the server, things that it can't, it'll have the client representation to it. And that means that it can incrementally update the client application as you navigate around maintaining the current state and not having to rehydrate ever again. Blah, 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 blah. A lot of words. So this is already being rendered on the server. That's fine. And here we have the search field. And as you can see, it was a client component and it's saying this client JavaScript file lives in the client five chunk. So then the browser requests client five. And here is the actual component for the search field. And it applies it onto there and it works here. Now here's what's cool. If I navigate around, let me clear this. Let's say I click this. I've now made a request to the server, say I'm navigating to a new page. Uh, you can imagine, this is a very bare bones demo, but imagining that the URL is updating as well. It's almost making a separate server request. The response here, so the request is now saying that the selected ID is four, is that editing is false. And the response is actually giving the updated content here. And again, it's incrementally loading things as it needs to. When I hit edit, 
it actually has to say I'm editing, which is true. And then it actually is telling me that I need the note editor, which I've never had to, I've never needed before. And that lives in the bundle vendors client three in here. And if I actually look into, what is this? Uh, note editor right here. Um, this is being rendered. Let me see where this is being rendered. Note.server. So this is only being rendered when I'm editing. And until I started editing, I actually didn't have to download the contents for that file. And that's what they mean by automatic uh, code splitting. Because when I was running on the server, by default, there was no note. So I was just rendering a string from the server component. But as soon as I wanted to edit it, I made that request to the server and it said, hey, you need this client side bundle over here. And the response from the server says, here's the thing that you need. And then I, then I just downloaded it there for you. And that's kind of the, the real life magic of it, where like you can actually think about a React application holistically from the server to the client. Um, that's as far deep as I'm gonna go right now, because any further that I go, I'm just going to be copying what they've already said in the RFC and also what they've shown in their uh, demo online. It's a long video detailing why they went down this route, how it works. It's a very good demo. I'm the preview, if you will. But if you have curiosity beyond this, add a comment, but also definitely check out their blog posts and read their supporting documents there too, because uh, they know better than me. I'm just doing my best of uh, getting you informed. Hopefully that gives you a general introduction about what, how, why React Server Components is, can, blah, blue. Uh, and you have a curiosity around that there. Curious what other thoughts you have around it. Um, I'll be honest, the first time I saw React Server Components, I scoffed and I said, what is this hot garbage? How dare the React team uh, try to make me do something that I don't need? And then I started looking into it more and I was like, oh, there's a lot of thought being put into this. These are smart cookies over there. So that's how it usually goes with that. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you again in the next one. If you're not already a subscriber, subscribe for more videos like these and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, stay happy, stay good.